Here are seven things you need to know about the Tesla Plug, the North American charging standard or NACS. Number one, this is only a North American problem. Other regions of the world have already settled on one standard, and it ain't NACS. I've seen some people talk in smack that other regions will change. Don't believe the hype. Number two, NACS is the winner. Eventually. Tesla already had the most market share of EVs on the road. Tesla has the best-selling EVs in America and in Canada, eh? Now add these other automakers, and by the time I hit upload to this video, there will be more announcing that they're switching to the North American charging standard. But I said eventually. That's because CCS, not dead yet. The plug that everyone else was using will still hang around. Federal NEVI funding still requires it. CCS version 1 is written into the law. There are many different makes of vehicles that will use it today, and more are coming. They can't switch overnight. There will be hardware changes, tooling to make, and extensive testing. Figure at least 18 months to make that transition, more likely two years or more. It will take a decade for CCS to more or less fade away, and vehicles with CCS, they'll be fine though, for reasons that I will mention next. Number four, stations with both plugs will become common. The federal NEVI funding I mentioned is now in the hands of the states, DC, and Puerto Rico. A couple have already come out and said they will require NACs. To be clear, this means stations will support CCS and NACs. The federal law requires CCS, but it allows states the ability to add other non-proprietary standards like NACs to their new charging infrastructure. That non-proprietary language also allows the addition of CHAdeMO to support Nissan LEAF owners. Expect more states to add NACs to their requirements and more charging stations with two cables, one with CCS and one for NACs, or the Magic Dock, which uses an adapter, leading to my next point. Number five, there will be adapters. Good news is that you can adapt from NACs to CCS or CCS to NACs. I mentioned CHAdeMO earlier. That plug is not compatible with CCS or NAX. There is no adapter to CHAdeMO. It works very differently. In that respect, this is much less of a problem than for Nissan LEAF owners and their CHAdeMO plugs. Tesla sells a CCS to NAX adapter today for $175. You can buy the same thing online from other questionable companies for less money. The other automakers who have signed on to NAX said they will offer an adapter to owners of their earlier EVs with CCS. Over the next decade, if you own an EV, it would be a good idea to have an adapter in the glove box, just in case. Number six, NAX doesn't guarantee a better charging experience. This is probably the most common misunderstanding of this change. The CEO of Lucid Motor, Peter Rawlinson, made a great analogy. He compared it to a bottle of wine. Putting a screw cap on a bottle that had a cork makes it easier to open, but by itself it doesn't make the wine taste any better or worse. Maintenance of the charging station and its software, they're the key to making a great experience. The next plug is just easier to handle. Number seven, Austin, we may have a problem. Tesla has been declared the winner of the plug war. More non-Tesla EVs will be paying at superchargers. That's more revenue for Tesla. Good for them. But existing Tesla owners may get pissed off waiting in line. Tesla will also have to add longer cables to accommodate EVs with their charging ports in different locations. I did a 60-second video on this problem. Check that out if you like. A longer cable means a heavier cable. That makes charging less convenient. Additionally, there are reasons why the Tesla superchargers work so well. It's that they've been a closed ecosystem. Let me explain by comparing to CCS. There are four basic entities to a charging session. The electric vehicle, the EV charging hardware or EVSE, the charge point operator who runs the network and network software, and the mobility service provider who authorizes payments. Each entity communicates via established open standards. Those standards are maintained by different open standards organizations that anyone can join to help maintain. For each entity, there are multiples of companies interpreting and engineering to those standards. 
all that variability can create compatibility issues. Those open organizations and foundations work collaboratively to sort out the issues. That's a pretty complex chart. By comparison, Tesla makes the vehicles, Tesla makes the charging stations, Tesla is the CPO of the network, and they manage payments as the EMSP. All the hardware and software were developed by engineers at the same company. But adding other OEMs will add variability to this ecosystem. There will be some interoperability issues created. Tesla and the others who agree to offer NACs will have to sort this out. That's it. Tried to keep this video short and informative. Give it a like and subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this. Thank you for watching.